Hey folks, I want to give you a heads up, Larry here from Larry's Fountain Pen Reviews. Uh, Mr. Announcer and I went over to Jim's house, Jim Hines' uh, house, uh, and uh, we did some videos out there with him working in the workshop, actually hands-on making me a fountain pen. And we're going to show you everything that he has to go through to make a pen, and what could happen when making a pen. So there's a there's a lot of work involved making a pen. It's not just put it on the machine and chiseling it out and doing what you need to do and getting it done. It's, there's a lot of patience and time that's spent into making just one pen. So we're going to be uploading four. Isn't that right, Mr. Announcer? Yeah, four or five. Four or five because... They were a little over two hours in length. So we didn't want to bore anybody and get uh, people to get bored and just to skip the video because it's really important, I'm thinking, to show people how a custom fountain pen is made. Now, the fountain pen that you're seeing is how I want it to be made. So Jim is going by what I want. Okay? So, grab yourself... A nice comfy chair, a nice drink, some chips, whatever. Kick it back and enjoy with me, Larry's Fountain Pen Reviews, with Jim Hines, the custom pen maker in Richardson, Texas. God bless and have a great day. Okay, folks, now in Jim Hines' workshop, we're going to see... Jim and actually working on a pen, making a pen, doing what Jim does best in action. Check it out. Right here, we're just making an adjustment to a section for one of Larry's pens. I 
All right, folks, I'm going to give you the first inside look on Jim. He's making me a pin. I picked out the color of the blank I wanted, and if you notice, he has to do the markings to get everything ready to go. He's got the sections going. So, anything you'd like to add, Jim? Yeah, so what we're going to do, this will be hand threaded. He wants, essentially, this big girthy pen, but more along the lines of this sort of length. Or that sort of length. Or, well, they're about the same length. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, we're going to end up cutting a tenon on this one and running some threads. And then we're going to bore a hole in this and then run some threads and make sure everything fits up the way we expect. And then we'll work on the section, some shaping, and finally polishing. So we'll make this, Larry, so that we can uh, take somewhere between two and two and a half turns to open. It'll be it'll be less than what I normally do. First thing we're going to do is flatten the face out. Let's me know about how far we got to cut down to get to the right energy.
that I cut about five thousandths of an inch off. I've been doing my favorite color, blue. Love blue. Because I love, you know, I, I like solid black, brown, red, orange, green. Even pink. Pink's hot. Give us a little room for when we're cutting. I noticed the smell. Does the odor ever get to you? Um, with this particular plastic, it does. Um, this is a, it's called acrylic acetate. So, celluloid or cellulose acetate will be very similar in smell. Um, Excuse me real quick, is this, uh, the acetate you're using now, is that the easiest material to work than other resin? No, no, it really isn't. Um, so, oh, this one? Yeah. No, I'm sure now, both of those. This is the diamond, diamond that's cast? That's diamond cast, and that's made out of alumalite, and that's probably the, the easiest material to work with. It holds a great thread, it's durable. Um, it takes a reasonable shine, although you have to work at it to get a full. This will polish like crazy. Uh -huh. okay? It's part of the properties of the material. You can't quite get the same sheen on alumilite as you can on this. Well, but this will be my second next one, and then even that orange this, one. This is a thermoplastic. This is fun to work with. You can actually take it and heat it up and bend it. Um, and again, it holds the thread well. It takes a pretty darn good polish. See, this is how like the blank looks until it, after it gets done with it, then it looks totally incredible. But you know, that's what you expect when you have a custom pin made, made for yourself. At least the way I think, I want my pin to be incredible. It's my pin. But acetate, it, it's a relatively, honestly, it's a relatively inexpensive material. Um, it, it's made overseas. And a lot of the, the big pen makers are partial to it because it's readily available. And it's consistent in color. It's all uh, computer controlled mixing and pouring and whatnot. It's not a human being doing it. So like, even with the diamond cats, there's variability in the rods. This stuff, you know, my American graffiti material, I use, uh, it's the same thing, it's an acrylic acetate. Oops. You, you can't hand pour that. There isn't a blank maker around, although uh, I'd like to see Jonathan Brooks, he might be able to. But, you know, that's the same material. Here's another example. Um, these are, you know, 
hand pour it, but they're brittle. They're a lot more brittle. That's some shine on it, yeah. All right. So now I'm going to dull this edge, and then we're going to change over some tooling so we can actually cut some threads. Now we started this pin at 1220. I'm going to pause that for a few. And as I was explaining to Mr. Announcer, I inadvertently changed the height of the threading tool. And if it's not right on center, it won't cut a thread. And because I'm old and my eyes don't work so well, yep, that'll work. I'll use those when I'm doing fine detail work too. Um, if I make a clip and you know I gotta put an intricate pattern in or something, I'll get that out and start filing down. That's just setting our zero position for the cover. So I, I guess I could say that it takes a lot of patience to do this? Well, there's two ways to do this. Um, and, and if you guys have gone back to Larry's channel and you saw the first time he came out to visit me, um, you can cut threads with uh, caps and dies. Okay? And they work really well. Um, there's a lot of pen makers out there that use them um, and quite frankly for some of my more common pens caps and dies are a quick way to do it. Um, this takes a little longer and, and these cut triple start threads so there's three threads which help it move quicker. We're going to cut four start threads today. Um, so yeah a lot of the custom pen makers you guys see out there a lot of the new ones that came up I've taught directly and, and they're out there because of me. I guess you could say I'm creating my own competition. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, you know, it keeps the it keeps the art going. It keeps the craft going. If nobody's out there teaching the pen makers, well, but we're not going to have it. And then, if you look at it the, on the other end, it it gives a chance to challenge each other. With well, new ideas, new yeah. ways, you know. You got, if you want to buy one of my pens, what makes it, you know, what makes it good? I got to be innovative, you know. Yeah, my, my point to all my viewers out there is, you know, I don't care where you buy your pens from. It's your money. You spend it wisely. But I'm just trying to show you on the serious side of Jim's expertise. He takes pride in what he does. He's a, a pen enthusiast like we all are. And quite frankly, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you don't want to buy more of my pens. Yeah, I mean, it's no, no loss. But, you know, you'll get to see here how they're made. But you'll see how much love and work it does to make these pens. So, you know, think about it. If you haven't tried one of Jim's pens, Maybe now's the time to try it. If you ever have any problems with Jim's pins, let him know what's going on. And that's the only way he'll correct, he can correct what's going on with the pin. And if you have one of my pens and you're having issues, contact me. 
I'll fix it, I'll make it right. Um, I'd rather know that I did something wrong or something yeah. unsatisfactorily than have to read it about it on a forum. Yeah, um, that, that, and that's a bummer, I, I, I think. Uh, for but, some... And you're more than welcome to tell people, hey, I got a pen from Jim and I screwed it up. Just give me a chance to fix it. Yeah. Okay. We're just about ready. Um, if you want to pause it, Mr. Announcer, I got to make a gear change on the lathe real quick and put something else in and take a bio break. And then we'll be right back. And I'll give Mr. Announcer.